Hello and welcome to the second section where we will explore k-means clustering. The goal of this section will be to introduce you to this very popular unsupervised machine learning model. There will be different topics associated to the k-means algorithm in order to reach the goal of this section, which is first to understand and then to be able to deploy the k-means clustering model in your personal R projects. This will be illustrated by an example of user segmentation from the publicly available dataset of online transactions presented in the previous section. In the first video, we will introduce the concept of clustering and how the k-means algorithm actually works. This will help us to know how to prepare and impute the online retail dataset that we will be using during this course. In the third video, we will present a methodology to select the important parameter of the model, that is the number of clusters K. Then, video number four, we'll see how a K-means model has to be trained. And finally, in the last video, we will see how to evaluate a K-means model and what are the possible ways to improve the analysis. In the last videos, we have seen different topics related to machine learning and R, such as what are the benefits of deploying machine learning models, why R is a good choice for deploying machine learning models, or how to select a machine learning model for a particular project. But in this video, we will introduce the k-means model and provide some intuitive explanations about this algorithm. This video will first show you what is clustering in machine learning. Then we will explore the k-means algorithm in details in order to understand how it works. This will be shown visually with the convergence of the clusters over the iterations. And finally, we will see why it is important to take care of the starting values. The k-means is a typical example of clustering algorithm. So before giving more details about the k-means model, let's first define what actually is clustering. Clustering is the task of dividing the population or data points into a number of groups, such that data points in the same groups are more similar to other data points in the same group than those in other groups. In other words, the goal of clustering is to segregate groups with similar characteristics and assign them into clusters. You have two different types of clustering, either soft clustering, where a probability or likelihood is assigned to any data point to belong to a particular cluster, or hard clustering, where each data point either belongs to a cluster completely or not. For example, using our online retail dataset, say that we find out that there are five different types of customers. Then, in soft clustering, each customer is assigned a probability to be in either of the five clusters, while in hard clustering, each customer completely belongs to one group out of the five groups. There are several types of clustering algorithm. For example, connectivity models are based on the notion that the data points closer in data space exhibit more similarity to each other than the data points lying farther away. Distribution or density models are based on the notion of how probable is it that all data points in the cluster belong to the same distribution, for example, the normal distribution. And centroid models are iterative clustering algorithms in which the notion of similarity is derived by the closeness of a data point to the centroids of the clusters. The k-means is a typical example of a clustering algorithm that falls in this category, which is hard clustering. 
The K-means algorithm is an iterative algorithm that aims at finding a local maximum in each iteration. In the first step, you just have to specify the number of clusters, K, that you want to input into your algorithm. Often, this number is chosen arbitrarily, depending on external sources, such as the analyst's knowledge on the subject that is analyzed, or the desired clustering resolution of the analyst. In this easy example, that we will show during this video to better understand the model, we can see that the data plotted on two dimensions are rather forming four groups of data points. Since this is straightforward in this case, we can decide to go on with four clusters, but in video number three, we will also see other more quantitative techniques to select this number k that could be used, especially when the separation is less straightforward as it is in most applications. Then the second step is to assign each data point to a cluster. Since we do not have any other information at this stage, this has to be done randomly. And that's what we can see here with the colored regions representing the belonging to each of the four clusters. And the white crosses actually represent the cluster centroids that have then to be computed in the third step. These cluster centroids represent the centers of gravity of every cluster's data points. But from now, these clusters have only been randomly defined. And then, according to some distance metric, such as the Euclidean distance function, we have to compute the distances of every data points to every cluster centroid and reassign each data point to its nearest cluster centroid. We can visualize that here as we see that the colored regions have changed and hence the clusters have moved. Then, since the data points have been reassigned, and the clusters have changed. Now the clusters centroids have to be recomputed. We can see that on the figure with the green arrows indicating that the clusters centroids have shifted. Finally, steps four and five have to iterate until convergence of the algorithm. And this can be seen on this dynamic figure that represents basically the steps 4 and 5 of the k-means algorithm. That is how the data points are assigned to each cluster and then how the cluster centroids are updated. Note that the plot on the right represents the total variation within each cluster. That is what the algorithm is actually trying to minimize against the number of iteration. We can see that in this particular example, the k-means model indeed converges to the expected clusters. An important point of the algorithm is the step number two, that is the starting values. We can see that here, by changing the starting values that should be randomly assigned, actually, it could lead to the algorithm to be stuck and fail to converge. But that can be handled by a good definition of the k-means function using the unstart parameter when this is needed, depending on the data set. So the unstart parameter defines the number of random sets that your algorithm will do to choose the starting values and then the function will report only the best one.